If the score is not bigger than the high score, then it doesn't do that. It just completely ignores it and then goes to application.load level, the main menu, okay? And so that's fine right now. But the problem is this game over function is not being called from anywhere. We're not seeing that uh, it has to be called from somewhere in order for this code to work. So previously, and we were inside of the ball scripts, which is where we were calling this game over or load the menu scene, okay? But we don't want to do that from there because I don't like, like I said before, I don't like to have game over states called from inside of, of uh, the game objects themselves. I like to keep it inside of the general scripts main game objects, okay? So all I'm going to do is, is comment that out. If I have two forward slashes, that makes it into a comment which doesn't get compiled. It's just a comment that the programmer can read and understand, and so that they understand the code. So that cancels that code. And let me just grab this from my notes here, just so that's easy and quick. And I will explain this to you as well. So paste that in. So I'm using uh, command V and uh, command command C and command V to control and paste, or control C and control V on a PC. That's a real quick, easy way to do it. It's much easier than going edit, copy, and oh, that takes a long time. And okay, so the first thing is what we want to do is we want the ball to call this function inside of the inside of the main game script. So what we need to do is we need we need to uh, the ball needs to know what script it is going to call the function inside, okay? In this case, we're using the, the main game script, and that's the name of the variable, and that extends the type of the type of information is a main game script, okay? So that should pop up if I if I just do a, uh, a quick test here. You guys should see this. Okay, sorry, it doesn't happen here, but usually what will happen is main game, as you begin to type it, you'll see the drop down list and it will show you main game. Uh, but in this case, it doesn't matter. We know that the type of script that we want to hold is a main game script because it says it right here. Okay, so inside of the main game script, we have a function called game over, which is the one that we've just typed. So what we're doing here is if the ball goes past minus five, then the main game script we want to call this game over function. And that's great. So we're not we're not calling the we're not loading the main menu screen anymore from inside of the ball we're basically just calling game over in, in from inside sorry we're calling the main game script from inside the ball which then runs this function here and then this function will call the main menu so that's we always know that the main menu is going to be called from inside of the main game script all right so let me just click save and if i go back into unity bottom right we're going to see if it's compiling okay and we shouldn't have any errors. All right, so that's good. And so inside of the, the ball object, what we did before is, if you remember, we basically put this variable main game script here. Um, but right now, it's not been instantiated. All of this, this is basically an empty piece of information. It's just an empty container right now. And it knows that inside of that container, it needs a main game script, but it doesn't know which one. So we have to tell it. And since we've not made it private, we can see that inside of the inspector, which is right here. As you can see, there's no game objects right now. What we want to do is just grab this general script. All right, sorry, let me just click back on the ball and drag this general script object over. Now, the general scripts object is actually a, a game object, but it knows to look inside of that to try and find the main game script. So there, if I let go, it finds it, okay? And as you can see, if I just expand it over a little bit, there we go, it's found the main game script inside of the general script, which is this one right here. So that's nice and easy. I like to use the editor a lot so that you can just drag things in and uh, as opposed to doing it in code. You can do it in code. You can find this script inside of code, but it's a lot more visual and a lot more intuitive if we do it inside of the editor. So if I click play, um, what we're going to do right now is we're not going to see anything we're, uh, because we've not set any kind of visual object to tell the high score. We've recorded the high score, and I think that might have come out around 73, but we need to have something in the main menu that shows that score. So let me just double check where I'm up to. So we drag the main game script. All right, so we're going to go into the main menu now. So if I just click on File, Save the Scene, 
if I double click on menu, that'll load up our menu scene. Now, click on the play button here, and all I'm going to do is click Command and C and Command and V to copy it, or Control and C and Control and V on a PC. I'm going to click on Enter, or the one that's just been created, and I'm going to call this High Score. 3D text and the reason it's called 3D text is because it is a 3D text object and it just makes it a bit clearer and inside of the game scene with it still selected I'm just going to grab this arrow by clicking on W and I'm just going to drag it down slightly so there we can see it's, it's changing it inside of the game view and I'm also going to remove the box collider here so if I go over to the high score make sure it's selected right click on this little settings uh, button here and then click remove component the reason is, is we don't need to tap on that high score text. There's no need for it to be interactive. We just need to display information to the user. Okay. And let's just click on the text here. And we're going to click on, we're going to type in high score colon. And the anchor, I'm going to make this to the middle center. And then make that into center as well. The anchor is just when, um, when the text is actually written, does it start from the left hand side? Say so this is the text object here. Does the text start from the left hand side or does it start from the center? Um, and then it keeps everything in the middle. Uh, it's, um, it's a little bit hard to explain, but just have a play around. Messing with these settings is no problem. You can click on upper left, bottom left, whatever you want to do. But in this case, I'm just gonna click middle center. Make sure that the text is written in the center as well. And I'm just gonna put that there in the middle. All right, and I'm just gonna resize it slightly. I'm gonna click on the object, tap R, and just shrink it down a little bit. Click on W, and move it over slightly. Okay, so let me just check where I'm up to on this scripting as well. So in the menu scripts, we need to add this functionality. Okay, so if you click on, what we're gonna do is open the menu, uh, the menu scripts that we made, I think in the last, in the video before, or the, the two videos before, Click on this one, the menu scene, double tap it so that it opens. And I'm just going to make a little bit of space here by clicking enter, command and V or control and V to paste. Okay, and so what we've done here is uh, we've created a, a variable. So remember, this is an empty object right now. It's just given this empty piece of information, like a space to store something, okay? And we're going to call it high score 3D text. And it's the type of text mesh. This is a, the type of information that will go inside of here is a text mesh game object, okay? Which is basically the 3D text objects that, we, that we've created before inside of the, uh, the editor. And the other function is the awake function. So remember the awake function gets called whenever the scene comes to life, all right? Whenever the game scene is opened, anything that has awake will also get called. And in this case, what we wanna do is we want to display the high score information of the highest score ever okay so we're saying high score dot text which is this one we're getting the text component by using dot text and if you remember this is this part here this text okay remember it has to you have to define which part of the text object you want to change and we're going to call it high score this is the the information that we're going to put inside of that text part of the component we're going to say high score and then we're gonna add the high score that was stored. So remember we, uh, when we finish the last game, we want to store the high score information if it's, if it's a higher score than the previous high score. So in this case, we're just saying high score uh, is the string. And then what we're saying, okay, player preps, which is the stored information in the hard disk or the flash drive, get the integer that's called high score and then just make it into a string. And a string is a, is a text object because this text here, the component, will not, will not accept an integer or a float or any kind of other information. It'll only accept a string. So we need to, this converts it into a string and then it, it uh, updates it whenever this await function is called, okay? So I'm just gonna click on, I'm gonna do it a different way. I'm gonna click on file save, open up the Unity scene, open up the, sorry, click on Unity. No errors, so that's good and I think what we need to do is just tap on general scripts and here as you notice again we've we basically said that we 
we've made an empty piece of information here. This is in, right now it's not got anything inside it. We're just defining what this information, this box, is going to contain. What information is going to go inside this empty box? Okay. And so right now we have nothing, but it's got to be a text mesh as we can see here. So I'm going to drag the high score 3D object, 3D or text mesh, and let go. And there it is. So like I say, in the editor, dragging values inside is, is very visual and very intuitive. I find it a, a much easier way to do it. If I click on play, there we go. So high score 268. And that was because before I clicked play and the game over, uh, whilst before we did, before we added the score to the main menu, this function was called. We basically gave ourselves a high score, but we didn't visually show it inside of the game. So if I click on play now, and this high score was 268, I'll let this ball go past. And it's still 268, which is great. That's what we want to do, we, uh, because obviously the we didn't beat the high score yet. So let's beat this 268, and we'll test that this is working. I will right, we'll do it one more time. So now the score is beat 268, as you can see. Let it go past 345. Okay, great. And we'll just do one more test and let it go past, so we don't beat the high score. And there we go. High score is still 345. Um, so let me, I think that's pretty much the end of this here. So yeah, test that the high score is working. So, um, but anyway, guys, like I said, this is, um, um, that, that's the end of this video for now, but I'm going to continue the next part. We're going to add in the next one, we're going to add some more scoring objects and we're going to make this game a little bit more visually attractive as well, because right now we've got the sort of the meat and bones of the, of the game, the structure and, and how it gets more difficult and so on. But we do need to add something more visual like, uh, you know, background or, or drag effects. And so in the next video, we're going to make it a little bit more pretty. Uh, and you guys can really have a good play around with that stuff as well, like particle objects and making textures and so on. And it makes the game, it's a lot more fun because it's more like, a, a, you know, artwork and, and sort of drawing things. And if you're good at painting using Photoshop, then that's great. So, uh, but for now, uh, like I say, guys, remember the, uh, um, uh, the the points that we mentioned, things about invoke repeating is a, is a very useful function, so have a play around with that. And and also as well, um, things like using the text meshes here and, and editing these text meshes, uh, for example, with scores or some kind of like string value, like a sentence or, or whatever, you, whatever you guys find useful. And also the player prefs. The player prefs is the thing that stores the game information persistently. So if the game turns off, crashes, whatever, or if somebody just goes out of the game or from scene to scene, then that information is maintained and it's permanent and you can access it again.